Are you shitting me right now? They see me rolling, they hating, patrolling and trying to catch me riding dirty, trying to catch me riding dirty. All right. Hey, it must be my mom's Bugatsu. What is going on, Cup Bangers? Today is an epic day in LA. This is the Carrera GT. I'm Alejandro, and let's talk about cars. Yo, hit it, Pedro. <laughs> Before Pedro cues the beautiful music, guys, please, if you're interested in one of these hats that we made only 12 of for some reason, uh, make sure to like, comment, and be subscribed to the channel. Everything down in this video, and you're qualified to win one of these on the next video. And to announce the winner of the last video, it's somewhere right here. You'll receive a message shortly from us, so uh, be aware, stay alert. Now, Pedro, cue the music. Porsche 918 Spyder is arguably one of the fastest cars around any track in the world. Learning how it all works would probably take me a few years because of all the complicated engineering that went into it. I mean, this thing has a naturally aspirated V8 engine that produces 600 horsepower that works alongside two battery motors that together produce 287 horsepower and a very complex way to split the torque and send it to every wheel as needed, all kinds of electronic aids, regenerative braking, and all sorts of gizmos and black magic to make sure that any driver feels like a legend on the street or on the track. But before all of that, there was the Mac Daddy that started all. A car was so wild that could only be tamed by the best drivers out there. A real precision machine that could only be exploited by one's abilities without any kind of help. It's just a lot of carbon fiber, some sticky tires, a six-speed manual transmission along with a clutch, a brake, and a gas pedal. Can you just tell it what and how to do it? I'm of course talking about the legendary Porsche Carrera GT. This car is just so brutal, so mental, so raw, that it's so hard for a regular mort like myself to understand what it's all about. It's also one of the best sounding cars to ever grace this earth. With a monumental 5.7 liter V10 engine that produces 612 ponies that propelled this legend from zero to 16 in just about 3.9 seconds. So that all sounds good, right? Right now, this must be one of the most coveted cars on earth. I mean, it's raw, it's a manual, has a great sound, a naturally aspirated engine, and it's a limited edition Porsche, right? Well, I'd be lying if I told you that not everything went great for this car. There are so many problems with this car that no one's willing to talk about. Most of them are end user related. So let's start talking about the first one, the driver. The driver is not here to uh, uh, enjoy the ride and go along in a regular car like any other car. This is literally you being the computer for this car. From A to Z, you're responsible for everything it does, every movement, releasing the clutch in time, driving the input, traction control, all those systems. Everything is relying on you, unlike anything else. This is the most direct experience you'll ever have driving. But if the driver is not good, this car is worthless. I mean, forget about AIDS, homie. This is really doing your homework, your math homework with an abacus. Forget about calculators, your iPhone, anything you know. This is just you and the car. It also has a bad track record because we all know what happened to Paul Walker in a car and also to uh, uh, Roger when he was driving it. He's a professional driver, so a lot of people got scared. If a professional driver can't drive one of these cars, it must mean it's impossible to drive. So that's another negative. It's bare. You're not buying this so that you can get like everything you get in a 918. It's got nothing. It's just you driving the car and it includes a radio that not once have I ever used. The one time he was on, I immediately turned it off because it's just distracting you from what you're doing. And that's not everyone's appeal. It's so inconvenient. This car is just so low for everyday driving. I mean, the first example is, if you want to put a lift on this car, you're going to have to do it also on the back wheels, not just on the front, because the car is just so low all around. And that's going to run you like your, your kid's tuition for college. That's, that's not good. Just for a car that you want to just enjoy and drive. Oh, the clutch. Don't get me started with the clutch as I'm struggling with it right now. Uh, I'm at a stoplight. It takes forever for the release. This is not a clutch that works like every other clutch. This is completely different from what you know. You need to completely release the clutch before you can give it gas. 
I know that doesn't make any sense, but once you give it gas, before you release it, the car will stall. It also takes forever to get rolling because you have to be so careful with the release so that the car getting, can grab the gear and start rolling. So right now I'm gonna have a tough time and I'm gonna be late uh, because of that. And maintenance, and that is everyone's nightmare. Just a clutch replacement, and again, you're gonna go through the clutch because it's not your common regular clutch that you know how to use. You're gonna go through that clutch way quicker than any other car, and it's gonna be a $20,000 fix. Obviously, every other part in every other expensive car that's older gets more and more expensive, but this is just bonkers, people. Right about now, you're probably wondering, hey Alejandro, that's all great and all, but uh, what happened to the nice things about the car that you were gonna talk about? Hey, listen, Italian Jimmy, let me tell you the nice things about it because all those bad things that everyone looks at as a disadvantage, I think are a major positive for all of us people that really like to drive these cars. Oh, see? Oh no, we're making a left turn. <laughs> that was unexpected. So let's go back, let me start all over again. The driver, this is a driver's dream car. You're literally the only input that this car is gonna take. It's only you, those four wheels down there that connect it to the road, and that's about it. If you're not paying attention for a second, this car will bite, and it'll bite you hard. And that's exciting, that's what every single guy that really drives their car loves about it. I think it's misplaced in the city and that's a big part of why the driving is so rough. But once you take this on the open road or a track, it becomes such a pleasure and such a joy and such a workout, mental and physical to drive this thing. And it's extremely rewarding when you get it right. Extremely rewarding. So it's a driver's car and that's a big positive. It's got a track record. Yeah, everyone looks at it like it's a negative. It's actually not. And I know it sounds kind of weird, but all these cars with a history are the ones that are worth the most right now, everywhere. So you have to consider this for yourself. Is this gonna depreciate the asset or is it gonna make it go up in value? And I think it's gonna make it go up in value. I really do. Oh, the turn ratio is so delicious in this thing, by the way. It's bare, it's got nothing but a radio. Who cares, listen. <laughs> you don't have a radio no who needs a fucking radio when you have that right there it's inconvenient like right now oh it can't take it anywhere in the city i think that was the biggest problem this car had this was never meant to be a city cruiser this is legitimately one of those cars that you need the world to be ready for you when you want to enjoy it and for you to be ready in that state of mind to enjoy it anywhere outside of a track and right now it's one of those days where just driving through neighborhoods, it just feels good, man, to own one of these, to drive one of these. The clutch is a fucking nightmare. There's no like, ah, oh, this is a better one because it's related to the maintenance. And you know what? Who likes maintenance? Fuck that. But other than those two items, this is the most joyful car you'll ever have. If you truly love driving, you're gonna love this car. There's nothing in here that doesn't scream driver 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 i mean it melts with your body when you're driving it you're the computer this is a first i've never experienced that before where there's so much responsibility and so much joy out of getting it right you can feel the tail just wanting to go a little bit and play I'm not gonna let it happen though The Carrera GT is really a kind of half full, half empty type of car, depending on how you want to look at it. But the reality is that Porsche created a legendary car that's the last of its kind. It was the last hypercar to ever come out with a manual transmission, the best sounding one of them all. A true one of a kind experience when you do things right, but also more savage than your ex-wife doing the divorce when she catches you slipping. This is a car that's best enjoyed when the owner has top driving skills along with an open road. And I don't think anyone that's ever dare to push one of these, even if it's just a little bit, to call this anything less than the greatest analog hypercar ever created. Cup to the bangers, it was a pleasure driving my CGT again. It's such a pain in the ass to let it go. But I have something else that I, I, I'm trying to get and I need all the cash in the world. Today I, I shed a sad tear because I'm gonna miss this boy. It, I, I barely drove it, but it's a legend that I always wanted to own. 
I did it. I'll put a check mark next to his name, but I'll come back and get another one when I'm ready. I promise. I promise, promise, just like the 4 0. Thank you very much for watching, Cup Bangers. I'm 100. I do not approve this message. See you later.